Bushings are subjected to high dielectric and thermal stresses, and bushing failures are one of the leading causes of forced outages and transformer failures. Reviewing of transformer failure data shows failure data from North American utilities have shown they can account for up to 40% of transformer failures. This data also shows that 52% of bushing failures are violent, in that there is an ensuing fire and considerable collateral damage. The two most common failure mechanisms are moisture contamination and partial discharge. Recent notices have been issued by bushing manufacturers concerning the effects of corrosive sulfur in the bushing oil causing PD in bushing failure. Moisture can enter the bushing through deteriorated gasket material, cracks and loose terminals. Moisture will cause an increase in the dielectric losses and consequently an increase in power factor. As the deterioration in the bushing insulation continues there will be a breakdown in the capacitive layers and tracking will become apparent which produces partial discharges. The method of detecting bushing insulation deterioration is well understood and traditionally offline tests have been performed. Power transformer bushing testing and monitoring. Little can be done for maintenance on bushings e.g. checking oil level or SF6 level. Many bushings do not even use oil or SF6. Hence, they need to be replaced periodically to avoid catastrophic failures. To plan the replacements, the bushings can either be tested periodically by taking outages or be monitored online. Online monitoring provides a much more cost-effective and reliable way to make informed decisions on bushing replacements. Offline and online. Power transformer maintenance practices for bushings. There are offline periodic testing practices and online monitoring practices for transformer maintenance. The online continuous monitoring practice has been gaining traction due to high return on investment and effectiveness in not only avoiding failures but also reducing time-based maintenance costs. The offline period maintenance practice for bushing may include visual inspection, infrared inspection, cleaning using different methods, power factor testing tan delta or tan delta, and capacitance testing. In extreme cases, a dielectric failure in a bushing can result in total destruction of the high-voltage equipment in power transformers, for instance, losses stemming from an event of this type can be worth a few hundred times the unit cost of the bushing that originally caused the problem. Among the different existing types of bushings, the condensing bushing stands out in high and extra high-voltage applications. In these bushing the insulating body is made up of a staggered arrangement of several concentric cylindrical layers of insulating material and layers of conducing materials for the purpose of making the electric field as uniform as possible. Why bushing monitoring? Among the reasons for transformer outages, bushing failures are often the cause. It is common to find a bushing testing poorly, and there have been many noted total transformer failures due to bushing failures. One reason may be because bushings are often tested offline to measure capacitance, dissipation factor, and power factor. Bushing monitoring system advantages. Early detection of a degradation of bushing insulation and internal layer breakdown, monitoring power, factor dissipation factor and capacitance at nominal voltage. Applicability for condenser bushing type and other OEMs, high accuracy measurement can be achieved by using parallel measurement of up to six bushing leakage currents. Optimized and purposive maintenance strategy reduces outage costs, comprehensive online condition monitoring system possible for transformer and bushings, in combination with transformer monitoring and diagnostic system. Sensor Design IEEE Standard C57.19.100, IEEE Guide for Application of Power Apparatus Bushings offers the following guidance when selecting a bushing monitoring system sensor bushing monitors are installed on bushing cap taps to allow for online testing and monitoring. These allow for continuous monitoring or periodic testing of bushings without removing the bushing from service. Since the monitors replace the existing cap tap cover, the user should ensure proper fit of the monitor to prevent moisture ingress into the cap tap. The fundamental design of a condenser bushing has remained consistent for over six decades, with the only modifications being primarily in manufacturing techniques and procedures. However, due to issues in the field and concerns related to safety, security, field maintenance, and environmental regulations, we are on the verge of witnessing significant changes in the realm of condenser bushings. This discussion will briefly touch upon the history of resin-bonded porcelain, porcelain insulator bushings and oil-impregnated porcelain insulated bushings.
We will also look towards the future with resin-impregnated paper-type bushings and resin-impregnated synthetic-type bushings that utilize silicone rubber insulators and epoxy-type bushings. Condenser bushing is defined as a bushing where conductive layers, either metallic or non-metallic, are organized within the insulator to manage the electric field distribution of the bushing, both axially and radially, through capacitive grating. Solid bushing, in our industry, is typically referred to a bushing that is entirely solid or oil-free and could be composed of porcelain, epoxy, or silicone materials. According to the IEEE standards, a solid bushing is a non-capacitance graded bushing where the primary insulation is provided by a ceramic or similar material surrounding the energized conductor. In reality, the most commonly used solid bushings, often referred to as bulk type, have been the type A, RJ, or LCRJ bushings previously manufactured by Westinghouse, ABB, and General Electric. All these designs either contain their own oil or share oil with the transformer. Condenser bushing is defined as a bushing where conductive layers, either metallic or non-metallic, are organized within the insulator to manage the electric field distribution of the bushing, both axially and radially, through capacitive grating. Solid bushing, in our industry, industry is typically referred to a bushing that is entirely solid or oil-free and could be composed of porcelain, epoxy, or silicone materials. According to the IEEE standards, a solid bushing is a non-capacitance graded bushing where the primary insulation is provided by a ceramic or similar material surrounding the energized conductor. In reality, the most commonly used solid bushings, often referred to as bulk type, have been the type A, RJ, or LCRJ bushings previously manufactured by Westinghouse, ABB, and General Electric. All these designs either contain their own oil or share oil with the transformer. When someone mentions composite bushing in the industry, it is usually assumed that the bushing uses materials like resin, silicone, polymers, or epoxy in the condenser body or the insulator. However, the actual definition of composite is a structure composed of different components, hence, an oil-impregnated condenser bushing with a porcelain insulator could also be classified as a composite bushing. Resin-bonded paper RBP refers to a bushing composed of resin-coated plain craft paper, which was used by Westinghouse on type S and OS bushings starting in 1941 from 15 kV to 69 kV. Essentially, the paper was wound onto the bushing conductor while the winding machine applied heat for the resin to activate and bond the paper together, with aluminum foil inserts used to create the voltage grating layers of the condenser core. After the winding was complete, the bushing would be machined on a lathe, then the condenser body was dipped in varnish and oven cured. This type of condenser body was dry paper only and the lower oil end of the bushing did not have a porcelain insulator. When reviewing the IEEE standards for bushings, we can compare the RBP bushings to OIP oil impregnated paper and show that the test limits for RBP are much, much more lenient with respect to power factor and partial discharge testing. RBP bushing power factors must be less than 2% whereas OIP bushings limits today are 0.5%. The partial discharge limits at 1.5 times line to ground for RBP bushings is 100 PC whereas the OIP bushings limits are 10 PC at 1.5 times line to ground. Examples of this type of bushing include Westinghouse Type O, Type O+, ABB Type O plus C, and G Type U, with voltage ratings ranging from 15 kV to 765 kV. The voltage grating in OIP technology may use aluminum foil inserts, herringbone printed ink, or an alcohol-based graphite-fused ink printed patch design. Manufacturers often recommend that OIP bushings with porcelain insulators be stored at the correct angle of inclination to ensure continuous oil coverage over the condenser body and in a clean, dry environment, resin-impregnated paper RIP condenser technology, while new to the U.S. market, has been adopted by the rest of the world since 1980 as an alternative to OIP condenser technology. RIP technology uses a crepe-type paper in the condenser core that is loosely wound with aluminum foils for voltage grating. After the paper core is wound to form the condenser, it is fitted into a metal cylinder which is then completely filled with epoxy resin under vacuum. This process results in a void-free condenser core body that solidifies after the curing process is complete. The condenser body is then machined to its final dimensions and fitted with a mounting flange. While the IEEE standards for partial discharge are the same as for OIP bushings, RIP bushings typically have no detectable elevated partial discharge at testing and the reported partial discharge is usually the test floor background noise. Noise. 
RIP bushing manufacturers typically recommend long-term storage requiring the lower ends to be stored in a clean transformer oil bath or dry nitrogen to protect the exposed paper exposed during machining areas of the core. Resin impregnated synthetic RIS is the newest technology in our industry and is very similar to RIP, except for the insulating material used to encase the aluminum foil voltage gradients. The RIS condenser core uses a synthetic mesh instead of crepe paper, allowing the resin to permeate and create a fully encapsulated condenser body free of partial discharge. The synthetic material is more resistant to moisture, addressing the storage issue concerns of RIP. Resin impregnated synthetic RIS is the newest technology in our industry and is very similar to RIP, except for the insulating material used to encase the aluminum foil voltage gradients. The RIS condenser core uses a synthetic mesh instead of crepe paper, allowing the resin to permeate and create a fully encapsulated condenser body free of partial discharge. The synthetic material is more resistant to moisture, addressing the storage issue concerns of RIP. Porcelain insulators have been the standard for equipment in substations and power transformers for a century. In the past six decades, porcelain has been the preferred insulator for oil impregnated condenser type bushings ranging from 15 kV to 800 kV. Porcelain's longevity has proven its worth over time. However, the manufacturing process of porcelain is outdated, messy, labor intensive, and yields inconsistent results. It's as much an art form as it is a science. A high voltage insulator typically takes about 16 weeks to produce due to the clay pug's curing time. Currently, there are no manufacturers of high voltage porcelain insulators in the US, with only a few producing low voltage insulators. Recently, some electric utilities have started using polymer materials for some types of insulators. These typically consist of a central structural rod with an outer weather shed made of silicone rubber. Silicone rubber or similar material insulators are less expensive, lighter, and have excellent hydrophobic properties. This makes them ideal for use in polluted areas. However, these materials do not yet have the long-term proven service life of glass and porcelain. Silicone rubber is an elastomer composed of silicone, a polymer containing silicon, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Silicone rubbers are widely used in many industries and come in multiple formulations. They are often one or two part polymers and may contain fillers to improve properties or reduce cost. Silicone rubber is generally non-reactive, stable, and resistant to extreme environments and temperatures while still maintaining its useful properties. When choosing a product that uses silicone rubbers, the application and environment should be considered. If we were to grade the performance of RTV, LSR, and HTV on products used within the electrical industry, we would see RTV as the lowest grade and HTV as the highest grade. Users should research the application and choose the appropriate product with the right silicone rubber to be used. The advantages and benefits of resin type condenser core condensers with silicone rubber insulator bushings include Safety no porcelain shards during events, versatility can be applied at any angle from 0 to 90 degrees, fire retardant to prevent further equipment damage, hydrophobic self-cleaning properties and less maintenance in contaminated environments, lighter weight, compliance with high seismic standards, reduced routine maintenance, no oil leaks, environmentally friendly, less collateral damage, enhanced security. RIP and RIS using silicone rubber insulators to achieve a more reliable, safe, and secure grid. Although these technologies are perceived as new in the U.S. industry, many of these products have been in use globally with thousands of products in service for over 25 years. This paper presents several types of bushing condenser cores and types of insulator materials. Users should conduct their own research and understand that all materials and designs are not the same within a finished product, from the manufacturing of the condenser core to the materials used. The type of material, the quality of the material, how the material is processed, the design, the manufacturing, and application of the final product can result in many different grades and field performance.